Saturday's first video for you was first new stories about missing fuel tankers. Uh, Ethiopian fuel supplies uh, arrive in Djibouti, uh, where the fuel is loaded uh, in uh, tankers and tankers depart for different Ethiopian regions. But today, Ethiopian Petroleum and Energy Authority disclosed that hundreds of trucks, fuel trucks, fuel tankers, which departed Djibouti have not arrived in regions. Where are these hundreds of fuel tankers? According to uh, an official of Ethiopian Petroleum and Energy Authority, the fuel might have been diverted to Tigray or to Sudan or to black market. Very important uh, revelation. We'll have a look at numbers uh, shared by this Ethiopian body about how many uh, trucks, how many fuel tankers are missing. Second new story is from Sudan, where in uh, Khartoum, Sudanese capital, protesters have started a sit-in despite security, security forces uh, attempts to disperse uh, the sit-in. The sit-in is continuing and it is growing. The third new story is about uh, U.S. deputy representative for the Horn of Africa who has resigned. We have seen U.S. special uh, envoys to the Horn of Africa that uh, uh, they are being replaced uh, very quickly and some of them are leaving, uh, resigning. Uh, we saw that uh, David Satterfield worked just a few months, then Mike Hamner arrived and now Deputy uh, Envoy is resigning. Why did he resign? Uh, next story is from Oromia Vears. Uh, uh, it's an unconfirmed uh, report which I want to share with you. Uh, it's about... Uh, uh, an individual who joined uh, Romo Liberation Army a few, some time ago. He recites uh, Nashidas. His name is Ustaz Kamal Habino. Where is he? Conflicting reports are being shared about Ustaz uh, Kamal Habino. We have uh, OLA's position as well, which we uh, received through some sources. Uh, lastly, we have very important news stories about Abune Matias, Ethiopian Orthodox Patriarch. Uh, by ethnicity, he is a Tigrayan. He is leading the church since 2013, I think. And it is said uh, that he was not allowed to speak freely after the start of Tigray conflict. Uh, uh, in an audio conversation, a video uh, in fact, uh, which was leaked, he condemned the genocide of Tigrayans. But it is said that he is not on good terms with Ethiopian PM Abiy and Ethiopian federal government. Now, some reports are being shared that in coming days, Abune Matthias, Ethiopian Orthodox Church Patriarch, could depart Ethiopia. Will he return to Ethiopia? What are uh, activists close to PM Abi, close to Ethiopian government saying? Why is Abune Matthias leaving Ethiopia? Uh, firstly, your uh, first new story is about missing fuel tankers uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, today, Ethiopian Petroleum and Energy Authority shared some figures about uh, fuel supplies which arrive in Djibouti where the supplies are shipped uh, to Ethiopian regions. Uh, the body 
this uh, petroleum authority says that between 15th and 27th of june last uh, month 83 trucks fuel trucks fuel tankers uh, were shipped from djibouti for the amhara region out of 83 only 33 arrived in the amhara region amhara regional government shared report about number of trucks which arrived in amhara region with this body uh, so 50 trucks are missing just in june between uh, 15th and 27th of june in just uh, 13 days 50 trucks which left djibouti for amhara region uh, have gone missing secondly in may 27 trucks went missing carrying fuel left djibouti did not arrive in amhara so in just amhara region within the last uh, one and a half month around uh, 77 trucks did not arrive which left Djibouti but uh, which went missing on their way. Where are they? This number which I am sharing with you, 77, it is related to just one region of Ethiopia. What about the trucks which uh, arrived in Oromia, BG, Afar, Somali region, SNNPR, Southwest? These regions have not shared data with Ethiopian petroleum body. So, if data is compiled of all regions, there could be hundreds if not thousands of trucks which have gone missing in recent days. Uh, this body says, Ethiopian uh, Petroleum Energy Authority, that these trucks, fuel carrying trucks might be diverted to Tigray. Sudan or black market. Now, delivery of fuel to Sudan through Ethiopia is a difficult task, I think. Uh, how will uh, fuel supplies uh, reach uh, Sudan from Djibouti? Uh, uh, the supplies will have to pass through uh, Ethiopia. So, it is difficult. Uh, supplies to Tigray possible. In recent days, we have seen that uh, Ethiopian government has uh, increased fuel supplies to Tigray. And thirdly, black market. Uh, fuel is sold in black market too. And we know that uh, uh, after almost a week, Ethiopian government is going to lift uh, subsidies on fuel. Uh, that is why fuel is being stored by uh, Petrol station owners buy some fuel companies. Subsidized fuel is being stored, which will be sold at high prices after uh, subsidy will be lifted uh, in coming days. But this, uh, uh, these fuel tankers which went missing, it has started, uh, it has been going on for some time. In May, trucks went missing. In June, trucks went missing. And even before that, uh, uh, the authority has not shared details about previous months. So, there could be thousands of fuel tankers uh, which have gone missing and fuel supplies are being diverted to black market or to Tigray. Two days ago, General Varede of Tigray Defense Force said that TDF had completed preparations. It was ready to take back its territories from invading forces. A viewer contacted me. He said, Sajid, can a military operate without fuel? If today say where they say that preparations are complete, it means that Tigray Defense Force is in possession of required amounts of fuel. Question is, from where did Tigray government, Tigray Defense Force acquire fuel? Well, yes, it was a very valid question. What I do know is that when Tigray Defense Force was in Kambolcha and close to Kambolcha city, there was uh, a large fuel depot and from that depot, uh, hundreds of fuel tankers uh, carrying fuel departed. Uh, towards Tigray. Yes, uh, uh, 
uh, Tigray Defense Force uh, did collect uh, oil uh, fuel supplies from Cambodia last year. It happened last year. So either Tigray Defense Force kept that fuel stored or in recent months somehow uh, Tigray Defense Force managed to acquire fuel. It could be through black market as well. Could this uh, revelation made by Ethiopian Petroleum and Energy Authority be linked to uh, TDF's announcement that TDF is ready for a new fence? It's not clear, but obviously TDF has some amounts of fuel if it wants to start a new offensive. Uh, second news story is from Sudan, viewers, uh, where on Thursday massive demonstrations were held. Uh, people managed to reach Khartoum uh, in 26 locations. There were huge demonstrations in Khartoum, Gidarf, uh, Atbara, Port Sudan, and Senar. And uh, Security officials used force, live ammunition was fired, more than 10 protesters were killed and since October so far 116 protesters have been killed. Since Thursday and before Thursday as well, hundreds of protesters have been arrested and dozens of them are women and they have been gradually released but some are still in prison. Now, important news is that uh, in Khartoum, Khartoum city, capital of uh, Sudan, protesters have managed to start a sit-in. Despite attempts by government forces to disperse the sit-in, the sit-in is continuing. We confirmed a few hours ago that sit-in in Khartoum is continuing. And people are trying to join the sit-in to make it grow bigger. We know that in 2019-2018, when there were massive demonstrations against uh, former ruler, dictator, Umar al-Bashir, uh, people staged a sit-in in front of his residence. Then after the removal of uh, Umar al-Bashir, uh, Sudanese people staged a sit-in in front of military headquarters, uh, I think it was in Khartoum. Then military uh, stormed this uh, sit-in and dozens were killed. The Sudanese sit-ins are known that uh, the sit-ins uh, bring about change. And uh, in previous protests, uh, security forces did not allow protesters to start a sit-in in Khartoum. Uh, that is why Khartoum was cut off. The bridges linking Khartoum with other cities like uh, uh, Umdurman and uh, uh, others uh, were blocked, were cut off. But somehow, uh, on Thursday, thousands of protesters, they managed to get over uh, these bridges and reach Khartoum and they have started a sit-in in Khartoum. Meanwhile, all mediators, IGAD, UN Mission, uh, African Union, uh, foreign embassies are condemning what happened on Thursday that uh, peaceful protesters were attacked by security forces and uh, more than 10 killed and hundreds injured in yesterday's clashes. More than 200 security officials were injured as well. We'll keep you updated about this set and will it grow bigger or will it be dispersed that remains to be seen. Thirdly viewers, uh, US special envoys uh, are being replaced in the Horn of Africa. Now a deputy envoy has resigned. Last year Joe Biden government appointed Jeffrey Feldman as a special envoy to the Horn of Africa. Keeping in view Horn of Africa's strategic importance, uh, the Biden government decided to appoint uh, Jeffrey Feltman. Uh, the purpose of the appointment was to find a uh, solution to the Gray conflict to be involved in uh, Sudan as well. Sudan and Tigray were two main issues. Jeffrey Feltman worked for a few months, uh, I think seven to eight months. Uh, 
he was replaced uh, and uh, david setterfield became new and what the horn of africa he worked for just a few months uh, and he quit and i think just uh, around one month ago mike hammer was appointed as the new us special envoy now mike hammer's deputy has resigned his name is piton nof Peter Knopf has been working as a deputy representative uh, for the Horn of Africa since last year. He worked with Jeffrey Feltman, with David Setterfield, with uh, Mike Hammer, but he has resigned. Why did he resign? Uh, no uh, uh, report so far about the cause, the reason behind the resignation. Uh, there are several channels working in the Horn of Africa, U.S. channels. Embassy, firstly, led by uh, Tracy N. Jacobson. Special envoys, Mike Hammer, Deputy uh, Peter Knopf, who resigned. Then, uh, Assistant Secretary of State for uh, uh, Africa Affairs, uh, Molly Fee who is known that she is dominating U.S. policy in this region. And that is why uh, U.S. special envoys find it difficult to work, uh, to collaborate, uh, to coordinate with Molly Fee. But uh, Piton Knopf has resigned, it has been confirmed. Uh, we know that uh, China has also appointed a special envoy for the Horn of Africa. Uh, Shui Bing is working as special envoy. UK has a special envoy, uh, France as well, special envoy for the Horn of Africa. So, uh, for global powers, Horn of Africa is of strategic importance. That is why global powers want to have their diplomatic and military presence as well in this region. Fourthly, there is a new story from Oromia, region of Ethiopia, unconfirmed report and we'll share it as uh, an unconfirmed report. The report is about uh, Ustaz uh, Kamal Habino, who recites Nashidas. His Nashidas are very popular. And some time ago, he joined Oromo Liberation Army. You can see a picture on your screen. The picture shows Ustaz uh, Kamal Habino, Nashida reciter who joined Roma Liberation Army some time ago. Where is he? Yesterday, uh, a journalist shared with me information that uh, Ustaz Kamal Habino developed differences with Romo Liberation Army. He went on to claim that uh, Ustaz uh, Kamal Habino had been killed by OLA due to internal disagreements. Uh, I tried to contact uh, some people close to Romo Liberation Army. Uh, no one has confirmed so far that Ustaz uh, Kamal Habino has been killed. I tried to reach uh, him directly, but I could not reach Ustaz Kamal Habino. But his uh, companions, they say that he is uh, all right uh, and he is uh, on southern front. Uh, Guji uh, brand up front. Uh, so, we are sharing it as an unconfirmed claim uh, which uh, was shared with me by a journalist who claims that uh, uh, Ustaz uh, Kamal Habino has developed disagreements with Romo Liberation Army. We are waiting to see a statement of Ustaz Kamal Habino. Uh, if he has a statement, uh, to reject this news, then we'll update you. Lastly, we have a new story about Ethiopian Orthodox Church Patriarch Abune Matthias, who was elected as the head of the church in 2013. By ethnicity, he is a Tigrayan. And uh, since the start of Tigray conflict, uh, he's been trying to speak. It is said that he was not allowed to speak. We saw a leaked video of uh, Abu Nematias, uh, which was smuggled out of Ethiopia by a journalist and uh, in that video, he condemned genocide of Tigrayans. The video was released, I think, last year. Uh, it is said that he is not on good terms with Ethiopian PM Abi, Ethiopian federal government.
federal government wants to remove him. It is said, it is uh, claimed. Now, according to some government backed activists, Abune Matias is going to leave Ethiopia in coming days. Uh, he has decided to leave Ethiopia uh, because he is not uh, on good terms with uh, PM Avi's government and that he is in secret alliance with TPLF. A new source pro Tigray claimed a few hours ago that PM RB uh, held a meeting of uh, pro government activists. In that meeting, PM RB said that uh, Abu Nematias was going to flee Ethiopia and after that, church will be reformed uh, and ethnic color will uh, be erased and uh, church will be free of ethnicity after the departure of Abu Nematias. Now, what this source claims is that Abu Nematias is due to depart Ethiopia in coming days in connection with uh, a medical visit, a medical checkup. He wants to undergo a medical checkup abroad. And Holy Synod, recent uh, church authority meetings, approved uh, Abu Nematias' uh, visit, which will. Uh, take place uh, in the last or third week of July. The third week of July this month, Abu Nematias will leave Ethiopia. And though he is due to uh, arrive back in Ethiopia in August, but uh, pro-government activists claim that he will not return. And then a new patriarch could be elected. Now, uh, the visit is being confirmed by some uh, pro Tigray news sources that he will uh, travel, uh, uh, he will leave Ethiopia, he will depart Ethiopia for a medical checkup in coming days. But if he leaves Ethiopia, will he be allowed to return? That is very important question, viewers. If Abune Matias uh, leaves Ethiopia for medical checkup on a visit uh, of two weeks, will Ethiopian government allow him to come back to Ethiopia? Uh, when EPRDF uh, came to power in 1991, back then Abune Mercorius was leading Orthodox Church. But he was not allowed to work freely and he went into exile. For years he remained in exile and uh, meanwhile EPRDF backed election of a new uh, patriarch Abu Ne Paulos was elected. So church became split. One patriarch leading in Ethiopia Abu Ne Paulos and one leading in exile Abu Ne Mercorius. Then after PM Abi came to power in 2018 Abu Ne Mercorius returned to Ethiopia. Abu Ne Mercorius uh, passed away a few weeks ago. So, could there be a similar scenario in coming days? Uh, but the important thing is, will Abu Nematias leave Ethiopia or not for medical checkup in coming days, which is being claimed by this pro-Tigray news source? Thank you for watching.